you doing, you big smoke stack of ribs? Smoke stack of ribs. I like it. I like that nickname. How you doing, guy? I just wanna I just wanna paint some barbecue sauce all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Then serve you to my family. That's a little cannibalistic. Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little cannibalistic, but you know, I'm with it. I'm with it too, man. Barbecue Delicious, sounds good man. right now. Make some. You make some really good meat. A lot uh, of marble, marbling in it, in you. Yeah. I'm a. Uh, I'm a biggin. I'm a big boy. You are. So. You can just start the show whenever you want. That okay. Was open. That was the cold open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And also back away from your mic. You sound like you're. Okay. Sound like you're inside of a trash can talking to someone. All right. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Game Day Breakfast Podcast. My name is Spencer. This is my co-host Daryl. Daryl, what is going on with you? Why did you hesitate? Why did you hesitate before you said your name? Did you forget your name? Because I almost said Daryl. <laughs> We're gonna introduce yourself as me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I had a roll with him. Like, I'm Spencer. How's it going, guys? We should flip it like that one week. Throw everybody off. Yeah. Be like, they'd be like, what? Wait, hold on. I thought that guy yeah. was the other guy. That's I not just completely. I've been bamboozled. Hit him with the old switcheroo. Yeah, I've been, you... I've been had. There was a there was a big switcheroo this weekend, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Uh, freaking. Uh, Notre Dame and Georgia was a much better game than I or anyone else thought it would be. Yeah, I thought that was going to be just an, an entirely huge blowout. Uh, but yeah. I looked up at one point, it was like the second quarter, I think, and it was like 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I, like it was 10-7 to seven at halftime, and I was like, what is going on? Like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the stats of that game because I didn't actually get to watch a lot of it. But uh, I watched, I, I think, the entire fourth quarter. And oh yeah, it just – the Notre Dame's defense is a hell of a lot better than I gave them credit for. Yeah, which I think is impressive. Um, I mean, they held yeah. Jake Fromm to under 200 yards. Um, QBR only 75. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot special going on. It was a very – it was a very um, – it was a very top five game. And obviously, yeah. Notre Dame seven, but you know it, it was a very top five game, um, more of a more something you're going to see in the NFL when you've got two very talented teams going blow to blow, as opposed to sort of you know, you know, a, a big mistake leads to a score, another big mistake leads to a big score. Yeah, talking about uh, talking about a big switcheroo, the uh, the Notre Dame and Georgia game is what I thought the Michigan Wisconsin game would have been, but Michigan is a joke. Really? Did you? Did you think that? Oh, I thought I thought that game was going to be, I thought Michigan and Wisconsin was going to be a hell of a lot closer than it was, and I thought Notre Dame and Georgia was going to be a blowout, but Wisconsin yeah. blew Michigan off out of the water, and then Notre Dame and Georgia lived up to the hype. So I'm actually kind of happy about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was nice to see something not make sense, um, at least at least in the top ten, because a lot of things have not made sense, you know in the top 20. Um, but to see something, you know, these top 10 teams, suddenly something is kind of off. Uh, w- w- was nice. So just to see, good to see things get shaken up a little bit. It makes the playoff a lot more interesting this year. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I, I've, I wasn't a big believer in Michigan and I'm really not now. Uh, uh, exactly. And, and, and after that game with, with army and when army really and truthfully could have come away with it, they had their chances. Um, it, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in uh, um, uh, Michigan's quarterback and his name. I used to Shea Patterson. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in him. Not not because he's, he doesn't have talent. He obviously has talent, and there's flashes of greatness. I just don't. He was at Ole Miss. I just I don't feel as though he has the ability to sort of lead a team in in, in big game scenarios. You know, uh, I think he's very talented, and I think whenever things, whenever everything is going right, he'll he'll pilot you, you know, to where you need to go. Um, but when you come up against some adversity, I guess a team that's that's right there with you, I, I just I don't like like him as a leader. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Harbaugh's job is going to depend on Michigan beating Ohio State, and Michigan's not going to beat Ohio State. It's just not going to happen. No, absolutely not. Unless unless our eyes are open this week with Ohio State's game against uh, Nebraska. I think if Nebraska can make it interesting. I have opinions we'll, about that I know, game. I, I know you do, and we'll get there. But yeah. I think I think if Nebraska can make that game at least interesting, then I think that there's hope for Michigan. But there's going to have to be some changes, and I, I don't I don't know if that will happen in time. But it's still early in the season, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, well, for sure. But, I mean, again, this season has been really fun, and there's been some very interesting things going on. So, mm. I like it a lot. The C did exactly what I said they wouldn't, interrupted a season. Yeah, they did. Uh, I thought I thought Utah would put up more of a fight. I don't even remember what the final score of that game was. 30-23. to 23. Okay. I just thought I th- I thought Utah had I don't know I just thought Utah had more of I thought they had more I thought they were gonna get it done but USC has always kind of done that like they'll mm-hmm. they you don't know if they're good or bad and then they'll come up a game against a highly ranked opponent and then they'll win and then to me USC is the epitome of a team that just isn't worried about. Worried about worried about expectations. They're not out there trying not to lose. They're just out there looking for blood. Like who can we get? Yeah, and you know, I mean, they kind like, of live with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, I mean, and USC is always like they've always got good recruits. They've always got they've always got a good team. Obviously, you know, being there in Southern California, like that's one of the hotbeds for for high school football talent. It just I don't know. USC just always has. They always have players, and they always have people that can go the extra mile, even right, when they're well, down to their third-string quarterback. Like a Texas or like an Alabama, they're, they're a storied football team. And anytime you can do that, anytime you can sell that, you know, hey, you could be the part of the next big USC, you know, the, the next – anytime you have that ability, anytime a team has been there, um, you absolutely have a lot – out the gate, you know, um, like if, if Alabama ever goes down the drain and they have a couple bad years, I guarantee that if they get a new hot coach in there, um, you know, let's say in five years, Saban's retired, they've been down for three years, they get a new hot coach in there that's supposed to do a lot of big things out the gate. They're just going to be able to say, hey, you could be the next big, you know, boom here at Alabama. Uh, and that sort of that brings all that nostalgia with it. There's so much you can do with just nostalgia and history and, you know, the story of a program. And that's why I think Texas got such a big boost after Tom Herman came on, because obviously you had the the reputation coming from Houston and all he did there, but you also had the, Hey, you could be the next big, you know, you can be the next big Longhorn team. Oh, for sure. And like, but it, but it makes it a with, lot easier to recruit them yeah. in that case. Well, like the thing with Tom, like a uh, Tom Herman at Texas or like Scott Frost at Nebraska or any of these, or even, hell, Nick Saban at Alabama, even though he's been there a while, it's a switch in culture, right? And yeah. it's like, it's not to say anything bad about the previous coach, but like, I mean, obviously, we both follow A&M fairly closely. There's a culture change between Jimbo Fisher and Kevin Sumlin. I love Coach Sumlin. I think he's great. But you can tell there's a difference, you know what I mean? And absolutely, it flips a culture. Like, even with LSU, like with Coach Orgeron, the culture is slightly different. It's not necessarily that it it was bad under Les Miles, but it just the culture has changed. And also our system has changed, which I wish we would have been running for a long time. But that's well, another and story. Here's, here's the thing to me too, especially when, when you look at college football, which is so heavily you know, recruiting based. That's how you get your talent. Um, um, what I've always thought is that you, you want the one-two punch, right? So you want the hot coach, but can you imagine if Tom Herman had went somewhere to like an Arizona State or somewhere like a Cal or somewhere like a Colorado? Um, you're looking at a situation where he's going into a team and he's probably going to get some very good recruits because of who he is, but that's only one thing to sell. You, when he's in Texas, he also has the ability to sell, hey, I'm this hot coach coming in and I've got a, name, you know, I've got a household brand. Um, and that just has a lot more potential to take you places. I think uh, from a recruiting standpoint, these high schoolers are like, I want to go here because everybody knows about Alabama or everybody knows about Michigan or everybody, you know, you get the idea. Yeah. That that goes a long way. 
Yeah, but like Tom Herman is a Texas guy. Like he went to Texas. Mm-hmm. Like he has he has ties to Texas. It's oh, Scott yeah. Frost played for Nebraska back in the day, and he was very good. So exactly, yeah. And, and like that's... even though in like LSU coach Orgeron, even though he played for Northwestern State, obviously he's he's from Louisiana. He's got that deep Cajun accent that we all love. And exactly. Yeah. Like when, LSU when was like his there. dream job, right? So yeah. And when now you, he's when got you have, when you have the roots like that, you know. Oh, for yeah. sure. You have the roots to where you're going to be going to. And that's, that's, a, that's a huge deal. Um, that's a really so, big deal. Coach O is just a treasure. I mean, oh, I love Coach O. He's so good. All of his interviews. Have you seen the interview? It was a while. It was like last year, but he was just, he was doing a press conference. And then he was like, excuse me one second, because there was like some players off goofing off and they were being too loud. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's so good. It's out. so He's good. Like, hey, I'm trying to... He's just yelling at him. Yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. No, I uh, I had to lean away from the mic. I had to clear my throat. My throat's a little scratchy. I apologize. Shit, well, bless you. I was worried. I was like, I can't let you go unblessed. Yeah. I'm going to bless you so that you're okay. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I just, I should have a bottle of water sitting next to me, and I don't because my throat's a little scratchy. But I had one, but I drank it all already, so we're in this together, bud. I got you. Um, But, yeah, man, it, I don't know. It has been a very fun season. Speaking of a fun season, here I'm gonna give you one example of how you know it's a fun season. You I know it's been, you know it's been a good college football season when uh, last Thursday night uh, everyone was staying up late on a school and a work night to watch Houston and Tulane. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that that was that absolutely. Um, yeah. Whenever a game that you don't think is – and that's the beauty of college football season is you get the games that don't necessarily matter as much, but you're super invested in, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, obviously, I've said that I'm a, I'm a bit of a Houston fan, and so uh, we we don't look good right now, but Tulane looks good. They hit us with the okey-doke on Thursday, and – um, that's that's kind of the switcheroo I was referring to at the at the beginning. Really? You didn't pick up on that, and I was like, "Well, it's okay. We'll we'll get to it at some point." Yeah, I uh, they that I was like, "What a call!" Like when I was watching the game, and they they went to do that kneel down play. I was like, "Something's up." I was like, you know, you get those like few seconds to like formulate a thought before he snaps the ball. I was like, mm-hmm. "Something's fishy with this play," because. He came. He was under the center at an angle. I was like, mm, "That don't look like a victory for like it looked like a victory formation." But I was like, "Something's weird on this play." And they ran the play that's called like hide the midget or whatever that play is called. Oh yeah, and absolutely. Where quarterback takes it, hands it to like the the up back on his right side, and then pretends like he's running a speed option with the running back, and then the whole line and everybody else takes off the other way, like fumble mm-hmm. ruski style play. But I thought it was great, and then. You know, Houston had a chance to stop him on that touchdown pass, but when you got three dudes that run up and just like kind of hit him and don't wrap up, you're gonna get a good well, play like that. You, you, you know what it is, man, and, and everybody was was making comparisons on social media to the time that Stephon Diggs had that catch against the Saints, and yeah. he sort of didn't get tackled. When you watch this play, um, this is this is a class. And I don't know, you did you play baseball when you were a kid at all? A little bit. Were you play outfield? Uh, yeah, I was a center fielder. Gotcha. Which you when you're a kid ball? means you suck. <laughs> yeah, that's where they, that's where they put the kids that have like me, like mediocre talent, mm-hmm. uh, or less less promise. I did outfield a lot too. Or the fat kids because um, I played a lot. I played a lot. Well, and the thing about it is, is like no no kid can hit it that far just yet. You know, like in t ball precisely. But, um, but but anyways, you get the but. So what I was trying to say about about this play, um, the last play of the game that Tulane won on is this is a classic case of the um who's who's going to catch it thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, and you've seen it. Like anybody who's watching a baseball, it will see it. Is like two or three guys. There's a pop fly. Someone's going to catch it. Somebody's got to. Somebody in this case has to get that tackle, and nobody calls it. They're all three worried about. Okay, well, somebody's got to get it, but I don't want to run into my own player. I don't want to worry about missing. And it was. It's one of those. It's one of those things where too much w- was a bad thing. I think if it would have been one or two defenders on this play, the guy would have went down. But since mm-hmm. so many were there, they sort of have this we have to smash this guy or we have to be careful not to get hurt. Yeah. Um, plus you're, you're drained at that point in the game too. So you're sort of second guessing yourself after that big scary play. So yeah, I mean it, it you know, would it have happened if it was a, a you know, a, a power five defense? Probably not, but 
it very well could have for the same reasons. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, that kind of transitions into something a little bit I want to talk about. You know, Houston and Tulane are obviously in the uh, American Athletic Conference. And, you know, obviously the, the poster child of that conference right now is UCF, and they lost this past weekend to Pitt by one point. But the – you can – and it, it started to happen over the last few years. We, we have this whole Power Five, Group of Five – thing going on in college football right now which is fine like I'm not the biggest fan of it but I understand why it's happening I understand why why it I understand the necessity of it but the line is starting to blur just a little bit like you think about uh three seasons ago you know Houston uh they come out and they beat Oklahoma like the opening weekend or like the second weekend of the season and they go and they and then they end up the year before they beat um Florida State in the Peach Bowl, right? So Houston mm-hmm. looks really good. And then, you know, UCF has had this this magical, like, three-year run. And, like, I still think UCF is very good. They just got outplayed in one game. And But, like, you look at teams – you look at other teams in the American Conference right now. Like, Memphis is undefeated. They beat uh, a rival in Ole Miss. And, you know, Ole Miss isn't as good this year. Um, but, you know, Memphis has been on the rise, so it's been fun to watch them. And, you know, a few years ago, Ole Miss was highly ranked, and Memphis went, Memphis beat them. And, yeah, and, you're right. And then you look at SCBU this past weekend. They beat TCU, you know, a highly ranked uh, – highly, I say highly ranked – a tw- number 25 TCU team after have losing the previous four. So mm-hmm. – and SMU was undefeated. meetings of the two. Yeah. Uh, SMU is undefeated. Memphis is undefeated. And – um. Tulane looks really good because their only loss right now is to number seven Auburn. And I think they only lost that game by like 18 points. I think the final score was like 24 to six or something like that. So okay. yeah, the, the line between power five and non power five is starting to blur. Like, and like it's, it's been kind of blurring for a while, but like this season feels like the season that it's really starting to pick up. Like obviously with like Georgia state beating Tennessee and like this past weekend, you know, Appalachian State beat North Carolina, and but Appalachian State had—I mean, Appalachian State always has a propensity for beating teams, mm-hmm. but it just—I'm glad to see it because it shows that these these smaller schools, smaller programs, not not as they're not as historic as some of these other programs. They're getting good recruits. They're getting good players. They're they're building a program, right. and uh, I like it yeah. a lot. Well, and I agree, but I think it, 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 I agree to a certain point because I don't I don't want to go ahead and, and and make the jump that the non Power Five teams are now legitimate contenders. I think that yes, they're headed that direction. Um, I don't know if they don't I don't know that they will ever get there, but I think they're headed that direction. I think what what's really happening is there are two things. Is number one. There's there's one there's one thing that is happening, and that's why it's appearing the way it is. And I think there's another thing that's happening that's the cause of the first thing. But the first thing would be that I think that the non-Power 5 teams are polarizing. Better teams that are non-Power 5 are getting better, and the you know the not-so-good teams of the Power 5 are, are getting a little bit worse. Um, and so I think what happens is you get a lot of matchups with, like, your, like the Appalachia State and NC game uh, is a good example your Memphis and Ole Miss, you're getting a lot of these matchups where you're seeing some of the better non-Power 5 teams against some of the not-so-better Power 5 teams. And it's good because they're beating a big name, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's great. Uh, you get your UCF almost beating uh, LSU last year is probably the is probably the, the you know the best example, um, but just not quite being able to push it in. I think mm-hmm. what it is is some of these non-Power teams are getting very good but they're not because of some of the matchups that they're getting, but you're not going to see them pull out some of these wins against like a Wisconsin or Ohio state or a, a Clemson or things like that. Yeah. The and reason and I'm not saying that, that those type of wins are going to happen. Like obviously direction. like, Obviously, if Memphis and Alabama played today, Memphis would not beat Alabama. Like, I like Memphis. I think Memphis is good, but they're not going to beat Alabama. I would watch that game, yeah, I would watch that game just to see what happens. But like, it's it with this trend moving the way it is, it starts to. I want to see it 
to where we eventually, like we talked about last week, we expand the playoff and we get rid of the power five, group of five, so everybody is on like an even playing field when it comes to ranking and stuff like that. But obviously we got into a lot that a lot last week. It just uh, well, and I think another part of the equation is that there's a lot of football players in the nation that don't necessarily get recruited to a power five team, or maybe they just miss out or maybe they don't quite make the squad or they transfer out. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys are going to these smaller schools because they want to get play time. They want to develop, they want to get better. And so you're looking at teams that are motivated. You're looking at teams full of players that really are, that that want so badly. Like so a good example or good comparison, I think average, and this this is going to be kind of funny to you. Um, on average, and I forgot the exact statistics of this, but I know it to be true, so bear with me. Um, mm. At a and there's a junior college just north and Bryan called Blinn, right? Uh, mm. and they do Blinn team students. Blinn team students are halfway in A&M and halfway at A&M. Um, the GPA of the average um, and the amount of like hours they actually attend is much higher than the average A&M student. And, I, and my reason, and of course there's statistics in there, you know, you have a lot, much, much, much larger sample size at A&M. So you're going to get the duds in there. But what I think it is, is they have a chip on their shoulder. They, they're working their butt off because they want to get to the next step. And I think whenever you get to a power five school and you're just out there sort of doing your thing, it's just your expectation that you're going to play, you're going to play, you're going to do well, then you're going to go to the NFL. I mm -hmm. think that some of these guys that aren't necessarily there yet, they're on the grind. They're like, look, I've got to get, I've got to find my way back to a power five school. I've got to find my way at least onto a highlight reel so I can get, find some way to get to the NFL. I think the motivation is, is, is much stronger there. Um, I and I agree with that. Like you can, you can definitely see like example a, a transfer that's doing well that no one's really talking about is Shane Bouchel transferred away from Texas. He's at SMU now, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he's playing well. Like I mean, obviously uh -huh. they just beat TCU. Well, so and you look at like you look at like Kyle Allen transferring out of A uh, and M a couple of years ago and goes to U of H, spends a little bit of time there, and then yesterday he was out starting for the. Um, started for Carolina because Cam Newton's out throws three touchdowns and over 250 yards. I mean, there, I think what's, I think what's beginning to happen is that people are realizing that there are other routes. Oh, for sure. And, and like, especially with the rise of, of things like last chance, you, you know, people are starting uh, to realize that the, that the, um, that the junior college route is, is a way to go, you know, and it, like, it, Viable and a lot of times potentially more safe because yeah. you're not you're not going up against these ridiculously big SEC defensive lines. You're not going up against these really fast you know uh, DBs in the Big Twelve. I mean, you get the idea. Like you're, although you're, you're trying, you're not necessarily developing as well as maybe you could in at, at a Power Five school. You're probably a little bit safer because you're not in a, such a rigorous competition. You know. Mm -hmm. And well, like I mean, there's several uh, last chance youth players who are in major college football right now doing good. Uh, the running back at Arkansas, I, ca I can't remember his name, but he was on last chance U season three and four, I believe. And then there's a there's a defensive lineman at Cal who is doing very good right now. So it just you can tell that people are starting to see that there are different routes. So the line is starting to blur, right? And so. Yeah. Eventually, the conventional wisdom might be, oh, go somewhere where you know you're going to get playing time and make that team good instead of going to a perennial contender and riding the bench for three years. But Rakeem Boyd, that's who you're talking about. Yeah, Rakeem Boyd. And he was very good. Like, I don't know if you've watched Last Chance U, um, but I've watched the season. He was very good at uh, Independence Community College, and he's been very good for Arkansas, even though Arkansas is having a down year. Um, so, but I like it. Oh, they're about to have the best game of their life next weekend. You think so? <laughs> I think so. Um, and hey, why not? Let, let, let's just go ahead and talk about it next weekend. We're at this point, uh, unless there was anything else you want to talk about before we move on to the matchups. No, no, no. I got it. That's uh, just talking about you know the lines starting to blur a little bit. Um, yeah. Oh, and I couldn't agree more, man. I think that there's there's a lot we. There's a lot that's going to change in the future. Um, I think that better schools in Power Five are a little less polarized, and I think that teams that are on Power Five are going to get a little more polarized because suddenly the routes – you get into a Power Five school, you're in a good spot, 
Yeah. But if you get into a, a non-Power 5 school, there's going to be like the hot spots of where you can really develop, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I'm very excited about the Houston, the future of Houston football. I'm very excited about the Houston of the the Houston, the future of Memphis the Houston of football. football. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm excited about the Houston of Memphis football, and you know I think UCF is going to continue their success. Um, so like the American the American Conference is looking good right now, um, yeah. but once you know Coach Holgerson at Houston gets his system in and gets some dudes around him, I think he'll be good. Absolutely, man. So. But yeah, you wanna uh, you wanna talk about some games, or you got anything else you wanna talk about? Yeah, right. We're just just because it, I, it still makes me sick to my stomach to think about A um, and M and Arkansas, Arlington. This is a, a game that A and M has won the past five years straight. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it is it five or six? I don't know. They've they've won them all. Yeah. Um, what are the odds that Arkansas pulls off the quote unquote upset? Uh. Unlikely, I don't think Unlikely. it'll happen. Yeah, um, I mean, but you know, with A and M having a bit of a down year, although their their two losses are to highly ranked teams, so I don't really count that as a down year. Um, in Arkansas, I don't know what Arkansas is this year. They just lost to San Jose State, so uh, I think I think A and M gets it done. Although this game has historical context to going to like five overtimes. Yeah, well, and Arkansas just shows up at this game because um, yeah. they won. This is this is one game because I mean, obviously, you play in the SEC West. It is just a, a crap storm all year, no matter what team you are, because you're it's it's the best division in football. Opinion, and it, Arkansas loves this game because it's a neutral site. They never have to worry about coming to Kyle Field. Number one and number two, historically, this is a game they feel like they can win because they've been over time several times. Mm-hmm. They've made it a thriller several times. I mean, historically, they know this is a game they can win, and they have they have less to lose than A and M. If A and M loses this game, that's that's a tragedy for A and M fans. If they win this game, that's expected. You know, yeah. A and M A and M fans expect to come away here by you know winning by twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, which to me was the problem with last week, by the way, is that Auburn is Auburn is four and zero at Kyle Field against A and M. Yeah, uh, and I think last week they were trying just not to lose, as opposed to trying to go out there and just play. Yeah, I uh, um, I think Auburn's for real. I think we underestimated them. Uh, I think I think Auburn's probably for real. Their defense is certainly for real. That's I mean, yeah. They they have one heck of a a, a way to stop a run. Yeah, so big, I, big props to them. Yeah, that big number five on their on their defensive line that they had to order a special jersey for. That's a big old boy. Ooh, yeah, that man's a that man is a wall in shoes. So yeah, he is. Uh, but yeah, so fun though because they get to play. We get to play against Nick Starkle, who is a uh, yeah. former A and M uh, quarterback. So that's always fun. That'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. And like you, sometimes you would think that a situation like that would be kind of awkward, but like I think it, it it always ends up being kind of fun, and there's like a mutual respect thing. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, it's and it's I, I I like it because I I I'm like a I'm like a low key Arkansas fan. I have a lot of family members that are Arkansas fans, um, mm-hmm. so I like to anytime something goes wrong for them, I hurt a little bit. But Arkansas has had some crazy upsets in the past. Like, you remember the, the year they had uh, Jonathan Allen and they went down into Oxford and beat, like, whatever it was, number number eight Ole Miss or something like that? Yeah, with that, like, crazy lateral when, yeah. they, had, when they had Alex Collins, that really good running back oh, with the dreads. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. that dude was good. And they somehow won it with, like, uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, Arkansas is just always fun to watch because – or they have been in the past. So I hope they're good again. I hope they can get somebody in that will make a difference. Uh, yeah. It, uh, football, college football to me is more fun when Arkansas is good because they, they're like the Appalachian State of yeah. the SEC. They just come in and win games they're not supposed to. Yeah. So. Also, their uniforms look really good. They went back to their traditional look, kind of traditional look, just red jerseys with, like, TV numbers and Arkansas across the chest and pants with stripes on them. They look really good. Who are you taking this one? You taking Nugget? Uh, you taking A and M? Yeah, I'll take A and M. Uh, but it this is a toss. Like I'm picking A and M because they're ranked, and I, I just think they're going to have a better game. But you know, I think this one this one will be closer than this will be too close for comfort. But I think A and M still gets it done. Uh, I, I'm believe it or not, man. I'm going to take Arkansas, and just just the reason for it being is when it rains, it pours. Mm. Um, a and M has a lot of injuries, especially with with 
uh, their starting running back being out. Isaiah Spiller has a lot of promise, um, and I think that if a couple of things go right, he's going to be really good. In the year. But I just I, when it rains, it pours, man. My gut's telling me that they lose this one in a way they shouldn't. Um, yeah. Too many early mistakes, and they can't catch up. I think Nick Starhole is is excited to get you know some some friendly revenge. Mm-hmm. I get in the starting job, and he's got a lot to show. So yeah, I don't know. I I think it'll be uh I think it'll be a nightmare of a game for me to watch, <laughs> but yeah. I think Arkansas is going to pull it out really close. Unfortunately, yeah, it just like. Also, A and M has a when they're in a down year. A and M also has a high propensity to pull an upset. So, um, like a few years ago, when Auburn was ranked like number three, and Texas A and M had lost a few games, and they went into they went into yeah, Jordan Hare Stadium and got them. They play better whenever they aren't worried about like having a perfect season. Um, mm-hmm. Which, of course, most teams would because you're, you're about the process, not the outcome at that point. So, yeah, that's uh, a lot of coaching philosophy. We're not going to get into. Yeah, uh, so tell me about Ole Miss at number two Alabama. Ooh, um, this is, uh, you know, this is a, a, a game that you look forward to every year in the, in the West. Um, just because, you know, Ole Miss has once or twice in the past done some stuff to Alabama that maybe they shouldn't have mm-hmm. to do. Uh, I think Alabama gets it done. I think they run all over them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, think it's a, I, I think also it's a think long. so, but – Again, with Ole Miss, you never know. Like, yeah, well, they're going. They're going to be. They're uh, in, in Tuscaloosa. They're they're in Tuscaloosa. The only way Ole Miss has any chance here is if they get up, and the flu. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> they have to get up and they have to keep the crowd behind them, um, as opposed to in you know like you're out of their head. Yeah. So um, uh, everything has to go right. Yeah. Alabama wins by twenty. Yeah. Uh, like. This past week against Cal, I think Ole Miss got robbed of a touchdown. Um, but we could, happened? You texted me about that. It, it was like they were coming down right to the end of the game, and Matt Corral, the 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 quarterback, he throws a pass. His receiver was in the end zone, but he had to kind of come back to the ball, and he caught it what appeared to be right on the goal line. And so Ole Miss thought they had a touchdown, but – the, the clock didn't stop. The clock kept running, and they didn't go to a review because, like, Ole Miss didn't have any timeouts left, and there was only, like, 20 seconds left in the game, and it was, like, 28 to 20. And so they didn't call a review. They didn't, they didn't like, whistle the play dead or anything like that. Well, like, the play was dead, but the clock just kept running. So they ran up to the line and tried to quarterback sneak it to the end zone, but they were on, like, the two-yard line. So they got stopped, and Cal ended up winning the game. But if they would have got the review, I think it would have came out to be a touchdown. Now – um, they would still have to get the two point conversion, which is not guaranteed, but it would have given them a chance. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and like you can watch the replay, and like I don't know how much the replay has been studied, but I th- it looks like to me when I watched it, I didn't watch it live, I watched the replay, but it looks like to me that it was a touchdown that, but because the ball crossed the plane of the line, it, it looked very similar to that um, Wisconsin Michigan State game back in the day when it came down to, like, the last play of the game before it was going to go to overtime, and Michigan State just threw uh, a Hail Mary, and then Wisconsin batted it down, but he batted it right into the arms of the Michigan State receiver, and he kind of leaned over the line and then got drugged back behind it, and they reviewed it. It's very similar to something like that, but uh, they, didn't, yeah. they didn't get the review. So. Yeah, that's, that's – one of those times where the phrase "it be that way" sometimes is, uh... yeah, yeah, Alabama big, but you never know. I, I like Matt Corral. I kind of like some of the things they're doing there at Ole Miss, but Alabama big, definitely. Uh, give me your pick for Kentucky at South Carolina. Kentucky at South Carolina. Uh, give me the Wildcats. I like Kentucky in this one. Obviously. Well, I'm taking- I'm taking South Carolina at home. I think that they kind of have nothing to lose at this point. They put up 23 in Alabama, um, mm-hmm. and of course, at that point, a lot of some of that could have been attributed to you know garbage time. But the fact of the matter is, they still move the ball. I think they like uh, this new guy. What's his name? Uh, Hil- uh, Hil- Hilinski? Yeah, Ryan Hilinski. Uh, yeah, he's Ryan going Hilinski. to be very good. Uh, he's got a lot of promise. I think this is a game where he can just settle down and be like, you know what, the season is 
shot, but there's a lot to be gained. Um, but we don't have to necessarily have the pressures of getting to a crazy good bowl game or anything like that. We can just sit back and play football. Uh, I like South Carolina by 10, but I do, I do think Kentucky makes it a very fun game to watch, especially after making such a close one with Florida. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is going to be a very fun game, but – but they just uh, – they I think they're better on the road. Excuse, excuse me. I think they're better at home because they went to Mississippi State last week and kind of laid an egg. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. But this is my recliner, this is my recliner game of the week just because sometimes a nice little a nice little defensive SEC East game is, is kind of fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so tell me about uh, SMU at USF. Mm, that is going to be a fun game. Uh I changed my mind. That <laughs> that is my couch game of the week. Yeah. Um, uh, USF is one and two right now. SMU is four and zero. Um, you know, like I like I said earlier, the American Conference looks really good right now. Um, so, um, yeah, give me SMU in this one. Even though they're yeah. on the road, I, Shane Bouchelle is playing well. Uh, I like. Uh, I'm- they got good running backs, and I like their defense. So, I agree with you. They're hot right now. Shane Bouchelle is 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 out there just playing football. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think they're gonna do. They're gonna. I think they'll come out and get it. Yeah, uh, this is their first coming up. Big. Yeah, this is their first four and zero start since nineteen eighty four. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah. that's the year they played BYU in the national championship. So, there's precedent there. I think yeah, I think sure. if SMU continues to win, if like maybe they win this game, I think they sneak into the top twenty-five. Like you put them at like you put them at twenty-five, twenty-four, something like that. See, this is what I like about their. This is what I like about SMU right now is they have a lot going for them. Obviously, with with just some of their positions, they have Shane Bouchelle, obviously a great talent. But they they got what I like to call last week a healthy win. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they had beat TCU, the final score was forty-one thirty-eight. If they had beat TCU forty-one seventeen. It, they would have come into this game like, look at us go. You know, we're this. You know, we are all that in a bag of chips. Mm-hmm. They, they won a very close one, which is to me a much healthier for a team because I think it it says, hey, we we have a lot to improve on, but the fact of the matter is we came together and we were able to overcome adversity. That goes a lot further to me than to blowing out a team, especially if it's a good team, because that just boosts ego. Mm-hmm. Um, and like SMU and, was looking really good seven, there for a while. Like, it was 31-17 to 17 at halftime. So, mm-hmm. you know, but – Yeah. And that shows how, you know, TCU's defense clamped up because they only let them score 10 more points the whole rest of the way. So the TCU still has a lot to look forward to this season, I think. Yeah. Um, I still think they can make some noise in the Big 12. Um, yeah. But that just – it was a rivalry game. SMU's playing well. Uh, and they just happened to get them. They uh, fried the frogs this week, as they like to say. And they, they got, got to the, take on the skillet. Yeah, they got the skillet back. They did. Yeah, they did. So, very nice. But yeah. uh, let me see what game I'm going to ask you about. Tell me your opinion on Clemson, North Carolina. Do you think it's going to be any more complicated than it looks? No. Uh, mm, I say no because Clemson's number one. But uh, I, I have. Gotta go to, uh, they got to go to North Carolina now. Yeah, I have opinions about the top twenty-five. Um. I don't think Clemson should be number one right now. I still think they should be in the top five. But just based on resume, um, they haven't. the only game they've played is A&M. And they only won that game by 14 points. So, you know, I think the only reason they're number one is because last year they went undefeated and won the national championship. Um, right. So I think they should at least... They're bringing the key guy back. Yeah, I think they should be, like, maybe five, maybe number six. Like, I don't think they should be number one. But I still think they get this done. Like, I know we're both big on North Carolina. We both like Mac Brown. But I just think Clemson has too much firepower, even though they're going to be in Chapel Hill. Um, well, it's one of those things where the difference maker is going to be Trevor Lawrence. I think – and this is the funny thing. is I think if you bring in – backup quarterback this is a perfectly even game i, I really think that the, you know if, oh yeah if, if, if you what is it that we used to do in ncaa like when you control the stats or you like level the teams yeah you can even the team i think, so it, I, think it, I think if you even the quarterbacks this about, is uh, clemson's well, wide receivers are really good 
Um, they are, and I, and I give Clemson a huge edge on their defense. But I do think that if you level the quarterbacks, this is a very this is a game that North Carolina could go in and win. But with Trevor Lawrence, yeah, way too much firepower. Yeah. And I still think, well, see, I'm kind of down on Trevor Lawrence right now because like he had a great, obviously he had a great season last year, but like he is just not lived up to expectation, right? Like oh, it's the, it's he's like classic sophomore slump. Yeah, and like I mean, he's playing well. He's at a he's on a great team. He's got a bunch of. Uh, good players around him. It's just, it, it's one of those things with with other conferences. Like you look at the Pac-12, you look at the ACC. Sometimes it's like, who the hell wants to win this conference? Because they all beat each other. So like, I think Clemson wins this game, but I also would not be surprised if we're looking and North Carolina's hanging around, and then all of a sudden they come. You know, we get down to the end of the game, and North Carolina's kicking a game-winning field goal like Pittsburgh did a few years ago against Clemson. So. Anything can happen, but I still think Clemson wins. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Um, I, I couldn't. I agree with you. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I just Clemson's good, but I, they're not. I don't think they're as good as their ranking declares. Let me ask you this: How does Notre Dame respond to the game last week that they could have pulled out? against a number 18 uh very red hot virginia cavaliers um this game is going to be very good this is probably my yeah. recliner game of the week this um, is gonna be a fun one. because notre dame surprised me against georgia um i'm a believer in notre dame's defense uh but i'm also a believer in bryce I'm a, perkins i'm a believer in notre dame's logo yeah oh it's it's classic man uh it's virginia's nice. logo is pretty good too that v with the, the little sabers that the looks sabers really good uh, yeah. You know, Notre Dame's defense showed us a lot. Um, but, I, you know, I'm a believer in Bryce Perkins, the quarterback of Virginia. Um, I think this will be a very good game. Uh, I I am going to pick Virginia in this one, but it's going to be by, like, a field goal. It's, this game is going to be very close. This game is going to be scrappy. Um, and so I think Virginia can pull it out. Um, but I also think... I honestly think this one can go either way, but I'm going to pick Virginia because I think if Virginia wins this game, they can coast the rest of the year, run the table, and end up in the ACC championship. Yeah, well, and I'll be honest. I'm, I, I will say this. Um, I am rooting for uh, Virginia. I think that Notre Dame pulls it out, and the reason is not because of anything – the reason is because of, of who they have played so far this year. Um, mm-hmm. An FSU team that an FSU, which is a, is a sorry FSU team compared to previous years, is Virginia's biggest win right now. Outside mm-hmm. of that, you look they they've beat a game. They've won a game against uh, William and Mary. Um, and they've won against um, the uh, Old Dominion. I don't think that they and, and these are not necessarily games that it was blowouts either. I mean the the Old Dominion game they only won by eleven. It was twenty eight seventeen. Yeah, they were down by they, ten at one point in that game, and I was it, looking at the yeah, scoreboard. I was exactly. like. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I want to believe. Trust me, I do. Uh, I think Virginia has the talent to make this a close game, but it, 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 would, it would take a lot for me to say that they could beat Notre Dame. I'm taking Notre yeah. Dame by 10. Yeah, but even if Virginia does lose this game, they still look very good because their loss would be right. to number 10. Well, and... they, definitely look, they definitely look would look good, but just given the rest of their season, yeah. I don't know that they can, they can and push. It, and it's a non-conference game. Well, non ac uh, Notre Dame's in the ACC and everything except for football, but uh, so, but yeah, so I still think even if they lose this game, West Virginia looks very favorable. Uh, the rest of the year, they have a very, I'm not gonna say easy schedule because no game is easy, but they have a very favorable schedule. Uh, so I think there's a good chance that they could run the table and end up in the ACC championship. Funny how you change one word and suddenly you make your statement less offensive to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. You know, communication is key. Right. You gotta so, pick your words carefully. It's not about what you say; it's about how you say it. Right. So they have a very mm, easy schedule. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All kind. So let's talk about this time machine game, Daryl. Ooh, the new segment, time machine game. So as you know, uh, you're if you're listening to this, you're listening to the to it as it goes up on Friday morning. That would be Friday the uh, 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 my calendar would pull up. Friday of this week. Friday, whatever day that. 
7th this episode is going to go up we're going to we're going to uh we're going to talk about a game that's in the past uh and yeah. we're going to guess for it even though it happened last night as of the time you're listening yeah. to this as and of this you, recording this game has not happened yet but by the time you're right. listening to this it will have happened so right so which is, and that's part of the reason why we haven't really talked about any Thursday games but we, just, well, we called it a time machine game because we thought, well, that adds a cool gimmick to it. <laughs> so, that's um, what we're going to talk about. So you'll know about this one before we do. Right. Well, we'll all know about this one, but when well, you're listening you will, to this... You will, know about it, you will know about it before recorded us knows about it. Yeah. Feel uh, powerful because you are you're time traveling with us, but you know stuff we don't know. So you're here yeah. to prove us wrong. Yeah. So Navy at Memphis. Uh, Navy's two and zero. Memphis is three and zero. I'm big. Like I said, I'm big on the American Conference. I'm big on Memphis. Obviously, you know, I'm a Navy uh, in in the the Army Navy sphere. I'm obviously on the Navy side of it. You know, we've talked about that a little bit. Um, uh, Navy runs that triple option offense. Um, Memphis has a good quarterback. Uh, I'm gonna change it. This is my recliner game of the week, even though I don't know if I'll be able to. Oh no, <laughs> it's, on national, it's on national TV, so it'll be because it's the only Thursday night game. Yeah, so I'll probably watch this one. Um, yeah, gonna watch. This is going to be a good game. Uh, give me Memphis yeah. by a touchdown, even what's, though. What's, go ahead. Even though Navy runs that triple option offense, I just think. Um, I don't know. I think Memphis gets it done, but I won't be upset either way. You know, I, you know, I'm looking forward to in this game is that you're going to see a, a team that runs a heavy, heavy run game against a team that has a heavy, heavy passing game. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to see fireworks on, with one team, and you're going to see grenades with another. Yeah, it's so, um, uh... it's going to be a very interesting dynamic. I think it's going to be low scoring just because you're not going to be you're not you're not going to have a high flying offense with a running. Mm-hmm. With a running team, time of possession is time of time of possession is going to be drained. But you also look at uh, at Memphis. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, you also look at Navy's last couple of games. They haven't allowed more than ten points since last year. Yeah. Um, so, and granted, you have to look at who they're playing. But I think it'll be interesting. I think it's going to be low scoring in the first half, uh, and even maybe in the third quarter. But I think Memphis is going to make some key adjustments, come out, and probably win it by about ten mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the second half. But yeah, this will be a fun one. Yeah. Also, shout out to Navy for doing better than I thought they would this year. You know, they're showing up. I don't know who they've played, but um, also uh, Navy is in the American Conference. I don't know if you know that. Um, so this is a conference game. Uh, it certainly is, yeah. I also think Army should join the American Conference of so the Army Navy game as a conference game. That'd be hilarious. All right, well, like, let's go ahead and let's cut the fat, right? Like, yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, bottom, of, bottom of the barrel time? Yes, sir. Bottom of the barrel. Uh, Florida State at the North Carolina State. Uh, yeah, Florida State's real bad right now. Sure. Sorry, Florida yeah. State. Sorry, Will. <laughs> not, not sorry. Will's fine. He's got, he's got a lot to look forward to in Baltimore right now. Yeah, he's also partially a Notre Dame fan, so he's fine. But I really, think, he has the strangest taste in teams. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I, uh, I think Florida State's his main team, but obviously he he likes other teams. He's kind of like me when it comes to college football teams. He just likes he likes who he likes, but I think Florida State's number one. So. But yeah, shout out to Will. Boy, Will. Best of all of us. He's mm-hmm. the best man of the entire uh, gang since high yeah. school. Since yes, middle sir. school. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a good one. Who you got Save. this one, Daryl? I'm picking North uh, Carolina State because Florida State's real bad. Went on a tangent about Will. Um, yeah. I, I'm actually taking Florida State, man, believe it or not. I want to I wanna keep hating, uh, but I do think that they're going to come uh, out and they're going to win this. Oh, no hate. They're just garbage. <laughs> Oh, of course, yeah. Just, just eyeballs. Just using your eyeballs. Yeah. Um, Stevie Wonder can see how bad Florida State is right now. Uh, no, I, I, I'm taking them. I think that they're going to make a couple of adjustments. Um, do you know that they're uh, some of their fans are putting together a GoFundMe to 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 fund Willie Taggart's buyout? That's a lot of money, bro. That's <laughs> what they're doing. It. Not, not that they're probably going to be successful, but the fact that they're doing it is very admirable. So very hilarious. I don't know what it is with Willie Taggart. I just, 
I, maybe he was in a maybe he's in a bad system. Maybe he doesn't have players. Uh, Fine bomb like laid it down the other day talking about just the, the history of Willie Taggart. Now his resume is actually just really pathetic, and they have he has no clue what they were doing mm-hmm. hiring him or what they saw in him. I don't know. I mean, I never yeah. met him. I don't know anything about his background, but yeah, apparently this was not the best call by Florida State, and they just kind of panicked after Jimbo Fisher left. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Really, I mean. Willie Taggart, I'm assuming, is a great guy and he's a good person, but it just. I think our will, I think our will would be a better coach. Yeah, our 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 will could get it done better, but like I don't know, not everybody's cut out to be a head coach, uh, and even the ones that are just get the short end of the stick sometimes. Like not everybody can beat Nick Saban or Bear Bryant, obviously. And so. not, you can't blame everything on the head coach. Like, oh, it's for your, sure. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility, but. It, you're also taking the blame for a lot of other things, you know? Yeah. So, um, but people don't see that. Yeah. So. I think, I think Willie Taggart would be better as like, you know, as a coordinator. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just, it's unfortunate. Or, Cause like, I mean, you feel time. bad. Who knows? Yeah. You feel bad for a guy. Obviously that's how he makes his living. That's how he supports his family. Right. right. Um, so, but yeah, oh. let's, let's like try that. to end the podcast on a happy note. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a, a super bummer. Uh, yeah. We got a uniform of the week this week. Yes, we're talking about Memphis's uniforms because they got some they got some combinations that I like a lot. They um, I don't know if they're wearing anything um, funky this week, um, but they're well, they got the gray and white. They oh, got this is they wear they wear helmets very similar to the Cincinnati Bengals in the NFL with the tiger stripes on them. Uh, they have a white helmet. With blue stripes, they have a blue helmet with silver stripes. They have a chrome helmet with blue stripes. Uh, just a lot of the stuff they're doing in the uniforms like right now looks really good. Yeah, let me tell you what these uh, these helmets that they're wearing. I'm looking at one where they've got the blue. And essentially, you may have to find the picture, but they've, he's got the blue jersey. He's running, um, and he's got the uh, gray helmet with a 901 on the side. That looks clean. That 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 helmet is just like this. It's not. It's somewhere in between matte and chrome. So it's like it's almost like mm-hmm. a like a darker chrome. Yeah. Um, uh, boy, that is clean. Yeah, I'm looking. Um, I'm looking at their. I really like their ones. They have a gray helmet with white stripes. Um, so they, it's a gray helmet with white stripes, and they wore white jerseys with just gray numbers and words. No outline and gray pants with white socks and white shoes. That looks really good. But a lot of the stuff Memphis is doing yeah. in uniforms right now just looks looks really good. I and mean, that's how you put them in the recruits. You have a high flying offense and you have some crazy uniforms. And mm-hmm. uh, they've got all blue. They've got all white, all black, all gray. Um, yeah. And they're they're like the the Oregon of the American Conference. That oh, stuff looks really good, man. Yeah, they're they're all black uniforms look great, um, especially when they're they wear white. Them. They're white uniforms with the gray trim, or just oh yeah, ugh. or the that uh that all gray that all gray they wore against uh, Ole Miss earlier this year with the blue numbers and the blue helmets also looked really good. So yeah, let's, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing a second podcast after this one only on college football uniforms. I mean, we could. There's enough to talk about. Um, Amen, Daryl. Here's what we're gonna do. Since you know, I'm a, I'm the one that's big on uniforms. Uh, okay. You tell me about a uniform that you that you're liking this week. Something you've seen, something you're enjoying. You tell me about one. Um, since uh, I'm our resident uniform guy. Well, you know what? Uh, you're kind of putting me on the spot here because I rely on you for that. Uh, uh, I would say, I would say, just tell me about something I, you've seen. Something that looks good. Something I've seen, something that looks good. Uh, we've kind of already talked about Oregon already this year, but I, I was really a big fan of uh, of the – I forgot which game it was. Maybe it was the Auburn game. Um, it, ordinarily, I don't like white jerseys with another color pants. If, mm. if uh, you, Usually, if it's a white jersey, I want the whole thing to be white. Maybe you can swap out the helmet. Yeah. That white but nightmare I, green looked really good. That looked really good, but again – I think I'm pretty sure it was the Auburn game. They had the white uh, jerseys on, and they had the black pants. Don't know why, but it certainly worked for me. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. And to me, to me, Oregon's always been the one that could wear a white jersey and other colored pants and pull it off, right? Well, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's uh, 
Yeah, here we go. Yeah, they were wearing the black pants with the black helmets. Yeah, and I think it was because the... I don't know. The, the, the black and white just goes better together than like other colors. Yeah, uh, I think um, those are the the nightmare green pants that they had on. Um, yeah, against yeah. Auburn. But that nightmare green looks really good. Um, and like obviously Oregon's the Oregon's the innovator of this. Um, so sorry for putting you on the spot, but that's all good. I was just like, oh god, what I? <laughs> I was yeah. like, I, re- I rely on you. You're the one that tells me. Yeah. And then I get excited and hyped. Well, we need to find a segment that that's something I'm not really familiar with that you could tell me about. Well, we'll, we'll incorporate that next week. I'll think about it. And yeah. Then, uh... Yeah, we cool. can definitely do that. But also, we should both talk about a uniform every week. So. You know, tell me about something. We'll we'll just each have our own uniform pick each week. How about that? Yeah, that works. I like that a lot. I mean, I just came up with mine off the spot because we talked about Memphis. Um, Usually I pull up something I've seen. Um, So a lot of these aren't necessarily pre-planned. but Yeah, it is straight. uh, So I'm also on the spot too. So. No, it, it is straight up extrapolatory. I mean, it yeah. is improv all the way. So, but yeah, is there anything else you would like to talk about? No, man. I think we bet covered it all. It's going to be a fun weekend. Um, a very fun weekend. We'll see what happens, dude. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, thank you for joining us, everybody. We appreciate you tuning yeah. in. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for being you, Will. Thank you for existing. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. Love you, Will. I'm I know military. You- Thank you for your service. Uh, yes, thank you for your service. Uh, Subway, thank you for thank uh, you for your sub your your sub thank you for your subways. <laughs> so your sub, your, I was your sub this. For, I was I was gonna say thank you for taking my sandwich out of the toaster in a timely manner so it doesn't scorch. Mm-hmm. Do you remember those days back when you used to work at Subway, Daryl? I do. They were, and you would just make me copious amounts of sandwiches. I can't eat there anymore because I want to just judge. I'm like, you're doing that wrong. That's not how we did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, Y'all have a great weekend. Great weekend of college football. What's up? Let's down. Yes, sir.